What is going on, everyone? And welcome to another episode of Black Desert. So, a lot of people have been asking me this question, and I thought it would be a good time to talk about it because, one, uh, the season just ended. So what the topic is, is what to do after seasons end. And before we start, check the code up there for NA and EU. It's the TwitchCon uh, Arena of Solaire Invitational thingy that's going on right now. And um, yeah, it's a bunch of goodies. So it's fun to watch as well. It's being streamed on the official Black Desert um, Twitch channel. So make sure to check that out. Get some goodies while you're at it. And pretty awesome. So yeah, with that said, what do you do after seasons end? Well, first of all, you would go to Fugar. And I'm assuming by this point, you are already capped out on Tuvala gear. And you're just finishing this for your first time, right? So there's a bunch of season special gifts. And in the order you should get things is the Pen Kaposha neck, because this has the most value and the most stats. Um, so it'll help you grind faster. And especially for new players, more AP is better. Helps you try out new zones. And then followed by the belt. And then followed by the ring. And then the earring last. And the reason why you would do that is because... When you level up, I think starting at 61, it gives you other Kaposhas that are at try. So you'd have an extra permanent slot and that should be already good to go. Plus, I think if you already have full pen Tuvala, you should be good to go. But those are all just slight upgrades to that. So yeah, once you finish that, talk to Fugar, graduate, get your rewards. Um, don't worry about the Perla star. It may look nice, but trust me when I say you would rather have the Kaposha gear and then don't worry about the 100 stacks until, like, you get everything else first. So, what else do you do? You're probably confused and wondering, okay, so now that the season ended, what do I do? So, I have a little list of things that I would do. And, yeah, so first of all, what you would do is start working with Jatina and getting your pen accessory and pen armor and weapons. So if you don't know what to do, basically the little tab up here is the progression pass. And you'd go follow this route down for all the pen stuff. And basically it teaches you how to do it. So yeah, from Tuvala, assuming you are at full pen Tuvala. That's basically like Tet gear on the market. So I'll just show you. Um, I don't think it actually matters. Let's just pick a random one. So ideally, it's the equivalent of a Zarka, right? So uh, pen Tuvala is the same thing. Um, your goal is to go for pen boss gear, which is the fun part, actually. Uh, it's not fun. It's actually struggling and pain and suffering. But yeah, with Jatina, it helps narrow that down. No RNG. You just get the materials. It sounds easier than it actually is, but there's no RNG. So your first like first pen or two are, is cheaper than the market. And by that, you should be able to do that. And I think the accessory one is like a month and a half or two months worth of dailies. And you get either a pen narc earring, a pen tongue red earring, or a pen crescent ring, which they are all good options. I think the best choices would be the pen narc earring or the pen crescent. And the reason why is because those would be straight up upgrades where the pen um, tongue grad ring or earring, I should say, is like the least useful of all of them. So you can always swap two times once it's at Tet and once it's at pen. And so if you don't like the choice you made uh you could swap it out for one of the other three choice or other two choices and yeah so personally i went the narc earring route because uh when i try newer spots and like the higher end zones sometimes i'm not sure how the rotation is gonna go or will i just die so i want to have the extra dp and plus uh the extra damage in comma is pretty important because there's a lot of places to grind in there that would be pretty good especially if you're going for like the infinite potion pieces or you just like grinding in comma sylvia because i think you're going to be there for a while which was which would bring us into our next topic of going for the infinite potions 
Now, if you haven't already done it on the season servers, um, now is a good time to do it because I think infinite potions are like the most used relic items or antique ones. And so, hold on, let me get all this sorted. Let's just make some random stuff. So the infinite potions, as you guys know, are these, the Ornettes and Odor's Spirit Essences, basically the health and mana potions. And the reason why I think it's very useful is because, one, you never have to think about buying potions again. And two, with the fairy, you can have it auto-pot for you with the Miraculous Cheer. So I actually have some videos um, covering how to get all the fairies and how to get infinite potions. So if you want to check those out, I'll leave it in the description. I'll leave a link. So yeah, that's something you should work on going for infinite potions. It will be kind of a grind, but at least there are things like the weekly quest where you can get five of a pity piece every week. And the resets on Wednesdays after reset. So at very minimum nowadays, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. But back in the day, you would just have to grind for the ancient piece. And nowadays, it's not as bad. So yeah, it's definitely worth going for. Another thing after graduating from season would be doing your adventure logs. Now, some of these are very important because they give you a lot of permanent account stats, which is very important. So over here, I, I haven't finished all of mine, but I got the relevant ones done. So you see how this gives you like extra AP, DP, some extra HP and extra bonus stats. At very minimum, you want to get the like AP and DP because these add stats to your account that are permanent. So let's say you make your next season character in a few months. These stats will carry over, giving you the advantage of over like another person who hasn't done it. And all of these are just extra bonuses like it Valks for enhancing permanent fail stacks, which is nice. And then more bonus stats. But yeah, I would definitely work on the AP and DP at a very minimum. And on the way, you'll just get all these. So I think the important ones to do are Thieves Encyclopedia. Uh, let me see what Herald's Journal is. Oh, yeah. Herald's Journal for Max Valks if you do enhancing. Um, the Igor Bertali's one will probably take you a while, but you just get some stuff on the side. Um, I think... Wait, let me... Okay, yeah, this one for the AP. Capris, if you need it. And which one? Oh, yeah, these are just Capris. Optional. I forgot which ones. But, yeah. Okay, so here... In case people are wondering about the Agris Fever, uh, that's how you get it. You start with 20,000. And then by doing the journals, you could boost it up to 100,000. So you just have a higher pool of it. So I think it's worth it. So yeah, definitely start doing your adventure logs if you haven't already. Um, so we talked about going for infinite potions. Um, doing your Jatina's quest for pen, armors, and accessories. Then we talked about adventure logs. Now, here's another thing. Now, this one might be... A little bit like a very broad term but you could go the grinding route or you can go the life skilling route obviously you could do bo both as well but for new players i always say uh try to do a variety of things but once you find something try to narrow what you enjoy doing down until you can make uh, a little bit of money doing what you're doing and then after that you could start expanding. So <clears throat> here's the life skill tab. I personally would recommend people like if you've never done a life skill in the whole entire season because you're just busy working on the battle pass and whatnot. I would start with gathering because gathering opens up a lot of other life skills. So you get materials from gathering. Then what do you do with them? You could either cook them, alchemy or process. And those will help you like make more money than you would so it's like expanding your empire in a way and then 
fishing, fishing goes with cooking and sometimes alchemy. So if you want to make foods for grinding, that works too. Hunting is basically gathering with extra steps. <laughs> but it is very profitable. I think hunting is very good. Um, training, if you plan on doing the horse content in the game, which they are slowly improving over time, but it's like you really have to enjoy catching horses and all that stuff to gather it. Trading is unfortunately like a not so great life skill at the moment. Um, but I would definitely try it once just to see what you think of it. So basically trading is you buy some like, you know, items from the town and then transfer them to another town and then you profit. So it sounds easy, but then it's like, you could just make more silver doing literally anything else. That's why. But the idea is cool. Uh, farming, basically, for people who are going for tier 9 horses. And so, basically, farming and training go together in a way. And then sailing and bartering is probably the most unique content um, they have in terms of life skills. Because a lot of MMOs, they don't really have ocean content or a lot of, like, you know, Every, like, when you think of MMOs, you're just like, oh, okay, on land content. Now, the ocean is, like, another huge section that it would probably take me hours to explain everything. But basically, uh, bartering is trading, but in the ocean. So, uh, that's that. And then sailing, you, this is a lot of other cool stuff, like upgrading your boats. Um, it's, it's actually really cool, but it's just they think they need to, like, upgrade it every now and then and make it more uh, worthwhile to do. But yeah, if you want to watch some sailing content, I do have some on the channel. Um, yeah, I'll leave a lot of links in the description to cool stuff if you want to check it out. And um, yeah, so once again, when it comes to the grinding or life skilling route, I would try to find one or two things you really enjoy and then just keep doing those for a while. And then once you make a lot of silver to buy gear and whatnot, then you start expanding into like more life skills because if you try to do everything and be a jack of all trades you're you'll be like you'll understand how to do everything but it's kind of like you're not making a lot of silver if you're not like high rank in everything let's say you're all like i don't know skilled one or artisan let's say you make artisan one in all of them that's not bad but if you just boosted one or two up into the master to guru rank, you would be making a lot more silver daily uh, than if you were just lower rank in all of them, just by, because mastery is a thing. And so it, I would just save that for another video on how mastery actually works. But yeah, if you're just trying to make money, the sad truth is um, grinding in circles is probably going to make you the most silver an hour until you get to high end life skilling like once you're like really high ranked and then once you figure out like a rotation and like a daily routine that's when the big money comes in for life skilling so yeah that's why i say narrow it down and then expand later and in terms of grinding so let's say what do you end at if you're a seasoned character i believe with no buffs or anything you're within like 230 to 240 AP with like 300 DP, right? And so where do you go from there? Um, I would personally go to Centaurs because Centaurs is just a lot of silver an hour. And especially it's not like a hard place either. However, it is kind of contested. As in like there's kind of a lot of people there. So yeah, if you're just trying to make silver right out of season, trying to gear up. Centaurs is definitely a place to go. Um, if you're looking for ancient items, uh, definitely in the desert is a lot of spots for the permanent compass and the archaeologist map. But some of them require a little bit of gear to do, so it's not high priority. But in terms of silver, definitely try out a lot of grind spots. But Centaur is definitely a good one. Um, in Kama Sylvia... You could try, I think, around the 240 to 250 area. Valencia spots are good. Um, 
you could go for the infinite potion pieces down in Dregan and Kama. And I think that's a very good use of your time as well. Uh, some of the infinite potion spots like uh, Ronaros and Sherikin, they give pretty decent silver an hour too, assuming you're using the Agris, which we talked about earlier. So I think that's worth it. Um, so those are just basic tips of what I would do after seasons. You can always go to Polys if you think you need more skill points. However, one thing I believe they are changing soon TM is you know how people need a ton of skill points to get all your skills? They are changing it soon where you would only need like a thousand something to max out, which I think is really good because it helps like not only newer players, but it also helps out uh, veteran players who want to just re-roll and try something new. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. If you're like at 1800 skill points, that's probably good. And I would just start focusing on silver gains and your gear upgrades at that point. But yeah, with that said, if you have any questions, I know this is kind of a broad video, but that's literally what I would do after seasons. I didn't want to make this too complicated, especially for the newer players. But if you guys have any tips or anything to share with other people who are new, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments. If you have any questions, be sure to join the Discord. I'm usually on there pretty regularly. So, uh... Feel free to drop me a message in my Discord. We have a Black Desert channel as well. And if you have any questions, cool, feel free to ask. And yeah, also leave it in the comments. I do check those pretty regularly. So, and uh, yeah, I guess before you go, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. You guys are awesome. Thank you once again for all the support on the videos lately. And um, hopefully you guys come back. So with that said, check that code, get some goodies. And I will see you guys tomorrow.